Um, but but I see them more and more in the news, more and more like, hey, they're 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 spying on us. You see more and more professors being being uh, put in jail and being arrested for taking money and selling them our research. And that's how China has become so big was basically just stealing us blind. Why was this never a big deal before? Why was this never in the news before? How come now under the Trump administration, it's a big deal? Well, I think there's a sense that we've had enough. I mean, for for the folks in the know, it's been evident for over a decade that the Chinese have been doing everything possible to steal as much valuable information from the United States and U.S. companies as possible. An absolutely unprecedented espionage campaign. Now, some of the fault, frankly, lies with U.S. companies who knew who knew these risks and decided they wanted to go into China anyway because there were short-term profits. But it also, in my opinion, was a, a bit of the U.S. government was derelict in a sense because we believed that China was getting better, that the more we engaged with them, the more we traded with them, the more we lectured them about the need to respect intellectual property, the better they would get. And with President, you know, it seemed like they might be heading in that direction for a little while in the 2000s, for instance. But with President Xi Jinping, all the trends have been moving in the opposite direction, more repressive, more aggressive, greater espionage. And it's been evident that things are only going to get worse. And I think, you know, the Trump administration finally said we've had enough and we're willing to accept the costs, but we cannot allow this to continue any longer. And they've launched an unprecedented campaign across multiple fronts to shut down Chinese espionage operations in the U.S., deny visas for uh, Chinese officials, for Chinese journalists or frankly spies masquerading as journalists sometimes you've got these confucius institutes uh, on on u.s university campuses that were effectively working at the direction of the communist party that the trump administration has attacked so in in my opinion these changes were probably a long time uh, due and there's a reckoning now yeah, China just uh, retaliated. We're going with a tit for tat back and forth with them uh, with, regarding our diplomats. You had um, last week Secretary of State Mike Pompeo uh, unveiling a set of restrictions on Chinese diplomats operating inside the U.S. And he said, though, that was payback for similar situations facing American diplomats in China. And now you have China reciprocating again, sending a note announcing, quote, reciprocal restrictions on the U.S. Embassy in Beijing and the American consulates across China. And the changes will apply to all senior diplomats and personnel at U.S. missions. But they didn't elaborate what the new rules would actually be. It seems as if we've gotten ourselves just just caught in this endless spiral of, oh, yeah, well, you're going to do this. Well, I'm going to do this. When do we get yeah. to the point where, you know, we just throw them all out of the country? And is that good for us? Well, there are, you know, there's dangers and risks to that as well, to this escalating out of control. But I think what folks in the Trump administration would tell you is that the Chinese have been playing by a different set of rules this whole time. You know, we've been playing fair and they've been cheating. And now that we're confronting them about it, it's starting this tit for tat escalation. But the alternative was you just keep let them, letting them cheat indefinitely. You know, you could see this with tech issues. The, tr- the Chinese are, are crying foul now because we're putting restrictions on Huawei and some of their 5G tech companies and, and TikTok. And they're insisting that this is unfair and horrible treatment of the tech. Well, they've banned U.S. tech companies from operating in China for years now. I mean, yeah. all of America's largest tech firms can't operate there. So in some cases, they're just getting a, a taste of their own medicine and they don't like it. And yeah. so they're going to retaliate. And you're right. You know, there are risks that we just keep going back and forth. But again, the alternative was to just continue allowing China to, to cheat. And so there weren't a lot of good options here. 
Yeah. So, so with no good options, we, I guess you, you just keep going as far as you possibly can until you finally wind up with that line down the bedroom, you know, like when the sisters are fighting and somebody eventually puts the line and you're not allowed to come on my side, but it's really disturbing because you, you see things like, um, Disney kowtowing to China with things like Mulan and changing dialogue. And they, and they, they filmed Mulan in an area where the Chinese have concentration camps for the Uyghurs. And you don't yeah. see any kind of outrage, the Uyghurs being the Muslim minority in China. And you don't see Hollywood being outraged about this because of the almighty dollar. I wonder if it's going to take um, the government cracking down on American companies and saying, no, you can't do business with China in certain, certain ways in order for this to stop because we need to hit them in the pocketbook and right now, China is a bigger market for a lot of these companies than America. Would you ever see the Trump administration doing that? Well, you know, and you're right to point that out. Not only uh, is Disney sort of catering to the Chinese market with Mulan, but they actually thanked the Public Security Bureau of Xinjiang uh, in the sort of formal credits. This is an organization that has been directly involved in in the detention of up to a million Uyghurs in, in basically concentration camps, one of the yeah. worst human rights abuses in the world. And they're getting a public shout out from Disney uh, in the credits of Mulan. So, I, I, you know, this has been the case now for a decade. You know, the last time China was featured as a, a villain in a Hollywood movie was in the 1990s. So they've been exerting influence over Hollywood for a long time. I think the difference is now people are waking up and realizing it. Yeah. And it, there is going to be a reckoning. At the same time, it's it's a balancing act because you also don't want the government getting too involved in what private industry can and can't do, what they can right. and can't say, who they can and can't work with. But hopefully the American public becomes more conscious of this and, you know, they can vote with their feet and with their money. And if... We've got Hollywood movies that are pandering to the Chinese. People shouldn't go see them. Well, it, that sounds like a, that sounds great in practice, Jeff. Uh, we're with Jeff M. Smith Heritage from the Heritage Asian in, uh, Studies Center. That sounds real good, but I don't know of a family that has children that are going to tell their kid no when their little daughter's crying <laughs> for the Disney princesses or she really wants to go see Mulan. They're going to they're going to tut 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 and they're going to shake their head, but they're still going to give Disney their money, and that that's a problem. I mean, that to me, that's a problem. Jeff, we, we've got to leave it at that. Thank you so much for joining us, Jeff M. Smith from the Heritage's Asian studies center appreciate you joining us on a saturday morning have a great weekend you too take care thanks so